Welcome to the brand new world of Chinese Dragons. My name's Steve and I'm going to take you through what Chinese Dragons is. The number one thing Chinese Dragons is, is we wanted to bring more games to the billiard table. It's as simple as that. And we thought to do that, um, we need to look beyond the boundaries of what's currently devised for the table because there really hasn't been a lot of new games invented for the billiard table. So with Chinese Dragons, Instead of thinking of games and making rules and then adapting balls to the rules, we thought, let's open up all our permutations and combinations. What's the best combination of colour, character and balls on the table that can actually create new games? So it was the flexibility of the balls, the racks, the scoring systems that we allowed first and then created games. And I think that's why we are able to create a lot of games and games that can be played by two, three or four people. So that's the main thing about Chinese Dragons is bringing more games and more people to the billiard table. So in this session, uh, I'm gonna talk you through the equipment and the games, and it's just me and you, the camera, uh, talking through each of the games. Separate to that, Hopefully you can see that if you go to the website, we've got all the games as well. We've got four to six minute videos on how to play the games. We've got uh, all the rules in writing on the website and we've got diagrams for how to set up the balls and how to set up the table. And we've got scoring systems on the website as well. So everything's there for you to see on the website, but this is actually just me introducing you uh, to the game. So I'll talk through each of those. I just ask probably that you keep an open mind because you're probably like me previously, I've just been playing pool, 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 you know, for as long as I can remember, the odd game of snooker if I could get access to a 12 by six table. But that's all I played and I love those games. Um, but I think that there should be more games on the billiard table. So let's go through the equipment first. Okay, let's go through the equipment and there's no doubt that the main player on the stage are the balls themselves. So this is a full Chinese dragon set. It consists of 20, 22 balls, four sets of colors, cue ball, and what's called the sea goddess. And within each set of balls, so you've got the pearl set, the yellow set, the black set, and the red set. Within each set, you've got four dragon balls and one emperor ball. There's your emperors up the front there. Some of the games use 16 balls, some of the games 15 balls, Another game uses 10 balls, one game only uses four balls, one game uses 10 or 20 balls. So um, this set of balls is your gateway to the six games. And we use the combinations of the colours and the characters to be able to create lots and lots of games for you. So they're the balls themselves, they're two and a quarter inch in size, so it's similar, same as the American pool size balls. Um, and yes, yeah, so they're the balls and they'll be your central characters in all the games of Chinese Dragons. Uh, these are the two racks that form part of your Chinese Dragon set. So that's a 16 ball diamond rack. Chinese Dragons, they're really solid, the racks. You, want, you need a strong rack, so that's that one. And this is the traditional 15 ball triangle rack. So. Uh, we'll go through the racks for each of the games as part of the tutorial, but that's the equipment you get as, uh, for the racks as part of, your, as, as part of your Chinese Dragon set. And to complete your Chinese Dragon set, we present the balls to you in this beautiful wooden uh, box uh, with a gold embossing on it and a nice uh, attachment open close latch on it. Inside the box is just basically the hard rubber to hold the balls and a soft uh, foam to protect the balls on the top of the box. That's your display case. Uh, this is what it looks like basically with the balls in. You can see that. Yep, so that's the wooden display case for the Chinese Dragon set. And then finally separate to the display case, which is the hardwood, is this uh, very hard plastic carry case uh, if you want to take the Chinese, your Chinese Dragon balls uh, to the club, but they've just got clips up the top, opens up. Again, you've got a really good solid base to hold the balls and then the soft top to protect the balls. Uh, and here's the balls in the case. See that? And your carry 
the case just shuts then you're taking it off to the club fantastic i love you at the club sorry it's only single side uh but that will turn heads when you put these balls in this case on the table people will be looking at you at the club so that's all the equipment uh let's just look at the web app next now for all your chinese dragons games your central port of support is actually the web app which is at chinesedragons.club you can see i've got it there as a recent search so i'll just click on that and it brings up the chinese dragons web app so let's have, just have a look at this on the web app the first thing we'll look at is games so if you first come into the site you just select games and there's all the games sacrifice jostle single strike rivers eliminator attack or deny and we can play pool or eight ball with our chinese dragon set as well let's just click on sacrifice they're all the same in terms of each game and how they're sorted out it starts off with an introduction to the game where they can be played by two three or four players and an assessment of the skill and strategy or fun that you'll need then there's a how to play video which lasts depending on the game but anywhere between sort of four and six minutes which is a really good video coverage of each game and then you've got basic as you scroll down the rack set up for sacrifice how it's set up on the table the rules of the game the fouls respotting which there is in sacrifice the rack set up for three players for if you're playing sacrifice for three players and then the rack set up for four players so sacrifice is a two three or four four player game so you're just scrolling up or down through the that for sacrifice i can then go back to the home page select another game select jostle same thing applies go back to the home home page again select another game same layout applies. So they're the introductions to the six games in written and video form. Again, I'll go back to the home page. Once I know the games, um, I would then be using my scorecard. So the scorecard, I click on that. I've already got the balls and I know the games and I want to set up my scorecard for the games. So I'll put in me. Then I'll put in you. I'll click next. I'll select a game, let's select Jostle. And what comes up is the scorecard. So Jostle's a point scoring system, and we've set up me and you, and we're ready to play the game. Um, and so this is our scorecard for the game, and we can access our rules within the scorecard as well. So we might be playing a game and have a point of contention, we want to look up a rule. I'll just click on Jostle, how to play, search the rule we're looking for, Yep, got it right. Go back to the scorecard. Continue to play. As you can see, this is a point scoring game. So I'm just clicking on a few things there. I'm, you're, I'm 30, you're 15. End of the game, I win. Brings it back, you've got a cumulative total. So there's your games and there's your scorecard with the games sourced within, within your scorecard. Here's the shop button. If you actually happen to want to buy a set, it's all in there. And finally, Dragon's Lair, which has got links to all our social media sites. I put in an article about the ball and quality design uh, of Chinese dragons. And I've got the tail of the four dragons, which I went in there before. So I can click ball and design quality and brings up what we've said about the balls and their quality. I could click the fable of the four Chinese, uh, the tail of the four dragons. All the time, I'm gonna always just go back to my home site, go back to my games, search, etc and that's how you use your chinese dragons web app and from there with the scorecard i'm just actually placing my phone at the side of the table and we're scoring the games accordingly or sourcing the rules from the side of the table so it's perfectly set up for your phone so that's your chinese dragons uh, web app i hope you enjoyed that little presentation All right, finally, I wanted to tell you a little tale that is the theme behind our balls. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you close-ups of the balls. So as I said earlier, what we we're really looking for to get ultimate flexibility in game design for games on the table is we wanted four colours and we wanted two characters into our set. And 
we were actually looking for some sort of thing that we could bring into the balls as well. Well, we discovered this old Chinese fable, traditional old Chinese fable, about the four dragons and the emperor. And I'll tell you that story briefly, just while I show you the bulls. So uh, the story goes that there were four dragons uh, that looked after the people of China and they lived in the skies. And the first of those dragons was the yellow dragon. The second was the pearl dragon. The third was the long dragon. And the fourth was the black dragon. Now these four dragons, as I said, looked after the people and they looked below from the clouds and they could see that the people were starving because it had not rained for a very long period of time. Their rice was growing and the people couldn't eat. So the dragons thought we need to bring rain to the people and they thought they could go to the South China Sea, get water from the sea, put it in the clouds, the clouds would form, rain on the, on the ground, the rice would grow and the people would survive. But the dragons reported to the Jade Emperor and so they had to go and ask the emperor first. So they went to the emperor and asked him. The emperor said, give me 10 days to think about it. Well, 10 days passed and the people were still starving and the dragons realized that the emperor didn't care about the people. So they took it upon themselves to get the water from the sea, put it in the clouds. It then rained, the, people's, uh, the rice grew again, the people lived and they all worshiped and loved their dragons. Unfortunately, when they went to the sea, the sea goddess, the sea goddess, saw the dragons and reported back to the emperor what the dragons had done. While well, the emperor is furious because he had never given, the, given them the okay to do it. So he grabbed the dragons and imprisoned them. And then he got four of the mountains from the Himalayas to crush the dragons into the ground, thinking that they'd been gone forever. What he didn't realize is that the dragons still had lots of water in them. And those dragons crushed by the mountains formed the four main rivers of China, which in English terms is the Yellow River, the Pearl River, the Long River, and the Black River. And that is the story behind the balls that are your Chinese dragon sits. As we like to say, we're trying to also bring fable to the table. Oh, finally, uh, this is our cue ball, which has got our Chinese dragon's claw on that, on either side. I don't know if you can see that clearly enough. Um, and that's our trademark for the Chinese Dragons set. So all these balls play are characters and they all play different roles in the different games that we're going to show to you. Before I get into each of the games, I wanted to show you two standard rack setups that I use quite often through the game. So then I won't have to repeat myself each time. The first is the diamond rack setup and the standard rack setup we use for the, for the, for the diamond rack is we use 16 balls across four colors and we have three dragons and one emperor represented by each color. And the way to set the rack up is to first of all, grab three dragons from one color. So I'll take the three black dragons and place them at the front of the rack. Then I'm gonna take three dragons from another color, place them next, three dragons from another color, place them next around the perimeter of the rack. And finally, three dragons from the last color so we've got all our dragons around the perimeter of the rack in the order of black, yellow, pearl, and red. Then I'm gonna place the emperors in the same order, black, yellow, pearl, and red, in the four central positions. So I get my black emperor, put him in first, then my yellow emperor, then my pearl emperor, and then my red emperor. And so that's the standard setup for a diamond rack. As you can see, the colors are diagonally opposite each other. You've got the order of the balls of the dragons in a color order, and then the same order of the four emperors in the central positions. So that's the standard setup for the diamond rack. Now for the standard setup for the triangle rack, we've actually removed a color. So I've removed the pearl set, and we've introduced one extra dragon for the remaining three colors. And I set it up pretty much the same way as I set up the diamond rack. So I'll grab one color first, let's go with black. I just get my four dragons, place them around the outside, four black ones, then four yellow dragons, and then finally four red dragons. So I've gone black, yellow, red around the outside, and then I just place my emperors in the central positions in the same order, black, 
yellow and red and you have your standard setup for the triangle rack. Now that I'm showing you the standard diamond rack and triangle rack, also common to all the games is where you place them um, when you're setting up the table. So um, with the triangle rack, it's like you set up with pool, you've got your foot spot and you're just placing a triangle with the front ball on the foot spot. Uh, so that's for the triangle rack. And then for the diamond rack, if I just push these side to side, I hope you can see that the diamond rack is longer and skinnier than the base of the triangle rack. And because of that length, it's much better that when you're setting the diamond rack, you actually take the two side corners of the diamond rack and you align it with the foot spot. So you're actually going the halfway point over the foot spot for the diamond rack. Right? So triangle rack, front ball on foot spot, diamond rack, mid points over foot spot directly down the, the middle of the table. And that gives you extra room down here. If I put it on the foot spot for the diamond rack, you've got a very short base here and you might get a crowd on the board. So move it up the front there, halfway over at the points of the diamond. And that's the, that's the setup on the table for the diamond rack and the triangle rack for the games. While I've got the two standard racks in front of me, I did want to talk a little bit about breaking uh, the diamond rack. But again, if I put the two racks with that angle, you can see the extra depth there is on a diamond rack. Uh, a triangle rack, the standard rack you'd have with 15 ball pool, is one, two, three, four, five rows deep. Whereas a diamond rack is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows deep. So normally when I'm breaking the triangle rack, just like in pool, I'm pretty much hitting the, the front ball and getting it spread out that way from the triangle rack. I actually find with the diamond rack, to get a better transfer of power, you better to come from the side of the table, either side of the table, and either hit the second ball or somewhere between the second and third ball um, to get maximum power uh, through the balls to get a, a better spread. If you hit straight on the front, it's got, by the time it gets to the back, you, there's a lot of loss of transfer of power for these balls. So come in from the side, uh, either side of the, the table for the diamond rack. Just one final note on the standard diamond rack and triangle racks for Chinese dragons is you can set the balls in either direction. So in this example here, I've got the pearl dragons at the lead position of the rack and I'm setting up the dragons around this direction and the emperors correspond in the same order. Uh, that's in that direction. Or I could set it up in the opposite direction where I've still got the pearl dragons in front, but we're setting the balls up in the opposite direction around the perimeter rack, and then the emperors in the central positions have the corresponding color order. Now, that's important in a few games where we've decided colors before the game has started. In this instance, maybe I'm the, the pearl set, and I, I might prefer to break from this side of the table, so I would have my pearl dragons there if I prefer to break from that side of the table, or as the breaking player, I can opt to set them up the other way if I prefer to break from this side of the table. So that's for the standard diamond rack. The standard triangle rack is exactly the same. Let's just squeeze those in there if we can. Hopefully you can see, again, we've got the black dragons in the lead position, player one breaking in some of the games nominated, black, red, and then yellow, if I was break, if I wanted to break from that side, I would set them up in that direction, emperors in the same order in the middle, or from this, if I wanted to break from this side, coming in from this direction, then I might set in the opposite way in within the rack with black, red, and then yellow, and the emperors corresponding in color order in the middle of the rack. So you, you can set the rack up depending on which side of the table you might want to break from. So a standard commonality with all the games is that when you're breaking, you can place the cue ball anywhere behind the ball climb to break. And also on standard fouls, it's cue ball in hand, meaning you can place the ball on the table and shoot in any direction. In some of the Chinese Dragons games, we re-spot balls after they've been pocketed. And the re-spotting rules are consistent across all those games that do have re-spotting. Our initial spot to re-spot the ball is on the foot spot. 
If the foot spot's taken, we go to the centre spot. If both of those are taken, we go to the head spot. And if all three are taken, which is pretty rare, we go to the next spot vertically up the table after the foot spot. So I place the ball there if all these three spots were taken. So they're the rules for respotting. All right, let's get into my explanations of each of the games. Now I'm doing this knowing that you have as your reference tools the how to play videos on the website and all the rules and the diagrams are in there as well. So this is more about your human being explaining it to another human being and getting you to the end as quick as we possibly can. So for the game of, the sac game of sacrifice, I'm gonna explain the two player game and the same rules apply to the three and the four player versions of the game. So I'm using the diamond rack. I've got 16 balls. I've got four sets of balls and I've got one emperor and three dragons in each set. And before the game starts, we're gonna decide two things, which colors we're gonna have. So I'm gonna have the pearl and the black and you're gonna have the yellow and the red and who's going to break. And in this instance, I'm going to break. Okay, so the first thing we do is because I'm gonna break, I'm gonna put three of my dragon balls in first. Then we're gonna take three of your dragon balls, then three of my dragon balls, and then three of your dragon balls around the perimeter. And then I'm gonna put the emperor balls in order as they should be. And if you look at this rack, it almost explains the game. I'm on the black and the pearl balls. I've got to get all my balls in before you get your yellow and red balls in, but we've both got to follow an order of getting our three dragon balls in on the perimeter before we can get the emperor of the same color. So I've got to get my three black dragons in before my black emperor. I've got to get my three pearl dragons in before my pearl emperor. And you've got to do the same with your yellow dragons and yellow emperor and your red dragons and red emperor. So you can see the rack design almost defines the game itself. So rules are quite simple. Light pull, I can only hit my balls first or penalty to you. Same for you, you can only hit your balls first. Within my sets, I can only pocket my dragons before my emperor. So if I hit my emperor first, that's okay, just so long as I don't pocket my emperor. And the same with all the other uh, dragon sets on the table. So if I did pocket my emperor before my dragons, the ball is actually respotted. opponent gets ball in hand. If I pocket one of my opponent's balls, it stays pocketed, even if it's an emperor, great advantage to your opponent and your opponent gets ball in hand. And then the only other real rule is the basic rules of if you hit the ball off the table, hit your ball in off one of your own balls, um, it's respotted and your opponent's got cue ball in hand. And that's the extent of the game of sacrifice. And for that's for two players. If we're playing for four players, we'd have exactly the same setup but we're only aiming for one dragon set each. So I would be player one, your player two, and then we have player three and player four. I only have to hit my three black dragons in before my black emperor to win the game in a four person uh, version of the game. For a three person, three person version of the game, we eliminate the diamond rack and we're also eliminating one color. So we end up with this scenario where we've got three players playing Sacrifice. I'm breaking, so I'm the yellow dragons. Second player is red. Third player is black. I've got to get my yellow dragons in before my yellow emperor, and I've got to be the first to do it before you and the third player do this. So first to complete their color set in the right order wins the game. So I hope you can see Sacrifice is really quite an easy game. Um, easy to understand, adaptable for two, three, and four players. And it's a little bit of a combination of pool, where like with bigs and littles, you've got to complete your colour sets first, but we have an order within each colour set. So it actually takes on some characteristics of nine balls or 10 balls. So you've got a combination of nine and 10 ball with pool in the game of sacrifice. I hope you understand all that. And we'll get on to game number two, which is Jostle. Okay, welcome to game two of Chinese Dragons, which is Jostle. 
Now, as I said with sacrifice, the aim of this little presentation here is to get you to the end as quickly as possible, knowing you've got all the backup resources at ChineseDragons.club. So the first thing I'd say with Jostle is it's a point scoring game. So you're gonna use the scorecard for Jostle to keep score of the points. Now let's get into the game itself. And first of all, this is the two player version. So in this game, players are selecting what colors they are, which will carry throughout the game. And in this game, I am gonna be the yellow balls and you are gonna be the black balls. As you can see, I hope, uh, we each have one emperor and one dragon. Now, how does the game work? It's a point scoring game, as I said, and there are three ways you can score points. The first way is to pocket one of your own balls. So if I pocket my dragon, it's worth 10 points. If I pocket my, sorry, if I pocket my emperor, it's worth 10 points. If I pocket the dragon, it's only worth five points. Same for you. That's the first way I can score points. The second way we can score points is by pocketing the cue ball off one of our balls. So if I get the cue ball, I hit my emperor first and it goes into the cue ball goes in the pocket, I would get 10 points. Likewise, if I hit my dragon and then it goes in the pocket, I would get five points. So first way we could score points is pocketing our own balls. Emperor 10, dragon five. Second way we can score points cue ball in off our own balls, in off the emperor, 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, in off the dragon, five points. Same applies to you. Third way we can score points is by doing what's called a cannon, taken out of the old three ball uh, English billiards, which is the cue ball hits both my balls in a single shot. Doesn't matter what order, could be emperor to dragon, could be dragon to emperor, but I'm hitting both balls in a single shot, that's called a cannon, and that's worth five points. All right, so three ways we can score. We pocket our own balls, hit the cue ball in off our own balls, or we hit our both balls at once. Now that's the same point scoring system that used to be there for, uh, that is there for three ball uh, English billiards. However, three ball English billiards is a continuous game where you keep going until you don't score a point. So I think it's a little bit conservative in a lot of ways. It's just about survival and continuous point scoring. In Jostle, you only have three shots to maximise your points in those three shots. Then it's your opponent's turn to maximise their points in three shots. And so you alternate until you get to that target, which we said was 200 in this, this case. So what you get in Jostle is, sure, you could just pocket a ball, pocket another ball, pocket another ball in your three shots. But you'll realise as you get better at the game, that probably won't cut the mustard amongst better players because Jostle is all about looking for combinations once you get better. So instead of just pocketing that emperor in, I want a bit of, put a bit of topspin on the cue ball. So not only am I pocketing the emperor in, I'm also pocketing the cue ball. I would get 10 points for pocketing my emperor and 10 points because the cue ball's gone off the Emperor. So what you get with Jostle is a lot of weird and wonderful combination shots that occur on the table. It's very eye-catching on the table and it's very inventive uh, for players to, to think, of cots, uh, think of good shots. And you want to get good at, at understanding the angles of putting the, the cue ball in rather than keeping the cue ball out. So there's a lot of spin, a lot of angles that go on in this game. And like I said, it's about taking a risk to get a higher score potentially than just playing that conservative line. Because once you've played the three shots, that's it. It goes to your opponent to maximise uh, their three shots. Um, there are no real fouls in Jostle. Um, if you don't hit a ball in a particular shot, or even if you hit your opponent's ball first, that's okay. Um, if you don't hit a ball, you just won't score any points and you've used one of your three shots. Now, the rack set up for Jostle initially is really simple. We're just using the diamond rack. <clears throat> We've said that I'm gonna break first, so I put my emperor at the front. Your emperor is gonna go at the back and then we just have the two dragons in on either side. And there's your rack set up for Jostle. That's for the two player game. So my emperor at the front, your emperor at the back, 
as you can see, there's an opportunity for me to get a cannon straight away on the break. Done that intentionally. Um, and that's the two-player version of Jostle. Three-player version is exactly the same as the two-player version in terms of shots and scoring, but we're just introducing a third colour. So I'll take those two dragons out of there. There's my rack. I'm player one, you're player two, and we've introduced player three, emperor, 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 yellow, black, red. And then at the back, we're just going yellow, black, red with our three dragons. And that's the three player setup for Jostle. You can see that there. And four player, we're just gonna introduce, introduce a fourth color, pearl. I'll push those three dragons back. Now I've got player one, yellow, emperor, player two, black emperor, player three, pearl emperor, player four, red emperor. One, two, three, four. And then the dragons go at the back of the emperors in the same order. So yellow first, then black, then pearl, then red. Four player version of Jostle. Same rules, same scoring. Jostle. Fantastic, fantastic game for a really open table with balls flying everywhere and high scoring points, hopefully, as you get better and better at the game. Okay, welcome to the game of single strike. And like I've said with the other how to play games on this video, I would watch this and in conjunction with the how to play video that's on the website at it's a, it's a bit more stylish than me. It goes into a little bit more detail. But like I say, I don't think there's anything better than someone talking to you a game, talking to you about a game over the table. So let me quickly explain single strike to you. It's just point scoring game, number one. And number two, we're only using 10 balls from two color sets. So we've got four red dragons here and a red emperor. And we've got four pearl dragons here and a pearl emperor. I could have picked any colours. I could have picked black and yellow or whatever whatever combination of balls I wanted to um, choose. So the rack quickly is I'm going to put uh, my four red dragons in the diamond rack at the four front positions and then I'm going to surround them by the four pearl dragons. So I've got um, eight balls in the diamond rack like so. Now, because I put the pearl balls at the back of the rack, we just alternate the colours up the table. So pearl, red, pearl, red. And that's the setup for single strike. Now, the aim of the game, I can explain very clearly, and if you think snooker as well, um, it'll help. Uh, as you know, in snooker, you've got to hit a red ball in to then get a single shot on a colour of your choice. In single strike, you've got to hit a dragon ball in first, and if you hit a dragon ball in, you've got to then, you then, you get five points for hitting the dragon in, then you get one shot on the emperor that's the same color of the dragon that you just pocketed. So if I pocketed a uh, red dragon, I get a single, that would get me five points. I would then get a further 10 points if I can then pocket the red emperor. If I pocket the red emperor, it's respotted. And I get another shot, obviously. And so now I'm looking for any dragon on the table. Could be red, could be grey, um, uh, pearl, sorry. And if I pocket a dragon in again, let's say this time I pocketed a pearl dragon, I then get a single strike on the uh, pearl emperor. If I miss the next player's shot, they've got to shoot for a dragon first, hopefully get it in and get a shot on the Emperor, hopefully get that in, continue back to shooting for another dragon. Again, if they miss, it then carries on to my shot. As I said, it's a point scoring game. The, the person with the highest points at the end of the game wins. Um, and a couple of simple rules are, like I said, the Emperor is a respotter. The dragons remain in the pockets. So as we gradually get rid of all our dragons, we keep respotting the Emperor. Once we get the last dragon in, in this case, the red dragon, you get one shot on the red emperor. If it goes in, you respot it, and then you, the, the players pocket for the final time the emperors to complete the game. And that's the extent of uh, single strike mini. Um, if you're shooting for a dragon, 
you have to hit a dragon. If you're shooting for the emperor, you have to hit the emperor. So the skill of the game is yes, you can pocket a dragon, but you need to make sure of two things. A, that you've, after pocketing him, you've got a shot on the emperor, and B, obviously try and get the emperor in because that's double the points of the dragon. That's where sc your score can accelerate a little bit more. Um, that's it there, the basic rules. Again, if you um, if you hit an emperor when you're shooting for a dragon or hit a dragon when you're shooting for an emperor, um, the other player gets a uh, ball in hand. If you pocketed any ball, you get no points on that particular shot. Um, uh, and just the standard rules, if you hit the ball off the table or pocket the cue ball, then the other player gets cue ball in hand and you wouldn't have got any points if you pocketed other balls in that shot. So that's... Uh, single strike mini. I think the great thing about it is it has got a, you can, I hope you can see that there is a lot of lightness to playing snooker, but we're only 10 balls on the table. Snooker, as you know, lots of balls, requires a big table, usually played on a 12 by 6. You can play this game on any size table with only 10 balls on the table, and it's a really good learning experience to then step up to snooker if you want. Uh, at a later date, it's a really sporty game. It, it, it doesn't take long to play. There's only 10 balls to clear, so you get quick games and, and, and quick results. And it's a skillful game. You know, your control of the cue ball is really important in single strike mini. So that was single strike mini. Let's talk you through single strike maxi. Now we've got single strike maxi. Exactly the same rules for single strike mini as there are for single strike maxi, but what we've done is basically doubled the balls on the table. So instead of 10 balls that are on the table with two colours in single strike mini, now we've got 20 balls on the table and four colours. But the basics are the same. Gotta hit a dragon in first, and if you hit a yellow dragon in, you've got a single shot on the yellow emperor. Get that in, you can shoot for any colour dragon, but whatever colour dragon you pocket, maybe this time it's the red dragon, you've then got to shoot for the red emperor. Emperors, every time they're pocketed, are respotted until all the dragons are gone, and then you finish off pocketing the emperors to finish the game. High score wins again. Um, so just to explain the rack, um, I'm quite proud of this rack, it's got a lot of colour, it looks fantastic on um, a, a table. I think you need at least a three-quarter size table to play this game. Uh, as I said, it's got 20 balls on the table as opposed to, say, 21 for a snooker. So it's only one less. Um, and um, for the rack itself, we've got the four balls spread out here. And um, basically, instead of the emperors being in the central positions, I've got a fourth dragon occupying the emperor's positions. So I've got red first. Uh, red dragon, then yellow, then pearl, and then black. And that's my setup for single strike maxi. I hope you can also see that I've got, I've placed, and it doesn't matter what order it goes in here, just as long as they correspond to the rack. So I've placed the red emperor at that spot on the balk line. So I draw the line up the table. That means I should have my um, black dragon on this side of the rack. I've got yellow here, so I've got my yellow dragon on the extreme rack. And then because I had red up the front, I've got red up the front here. Because I had pearl at the back, I've got pearl at the back here. But again, that's all there um, um, on the website in the how to play single strike mini and maxi versions. Now, this is quite a difficult game because the balls do get spread a lot more than snooker. So, yeah, sure, it's, it's one thing for me to pocket that yellow dragon in but there's a lot of balls on the table, so I've got to make, you know, there's a fair bit of strategy involved to make sure that, A, I've got a shot on that ball, because if I can't hit it, my opponent's gonna get cue ball in hand, and B, hopefully I've got a good shot on the ball that I can pocket it, and then the table opens up again for me because I could shoot for any dragon. Same foul rules apply, and like I say, watch this and then watch the video as well, or watch the video, and this might complement uh, the video for you. Welcome to the fourth game of Chinese Dragons, which is called Rivers. Now, if you remember my little story about the Emperor and the Four Dragons, at the end of that story, the Emperor got the Four Dragons and crushed them 
into the ground, but the dragons formed the four major rivers of China. So there's the Pearl River, the Yellow River, the Long River, and the Black River. The purpose of this game is that you have to pocket all four rivers in any particular order to complete your Chinese dragon scorecard. The first person to pocket all these balls and complete their scorecard is the winner of the game. It's quite interactive between balls and scorecard. So first of all, if I happen to pocket the yellow emperor first, I am just going to tick the yellow emperor off and I would get another shot because I've got a ball in. The next thing I might do is pocket the black dragon next. So I will tick the black dragon off my scorecard. Then actually assume that I miss and it's your shot and you happen to pocket a red dragon next. Then on your scorecard, you're going to put a tick on one of the red dragons. If you miss a ball, it goes back to my shot again. And we basically keep going. We play through racks until one of us has got ticks on all of these um, dragons and emperors on their scorecard, and that person is the winner. Very simple game, but what happens as the game progresses, and I'll just tick a few boxes so we've got a progressed game. It might show you that I've only got now two black dragons to get and one red dragon to get. All the other balls are not relevant to my scorecard anymore. I need to pocket those three balls to complete my scorecard. So I hope you can see that the longer the game goes, the harder it is to complete your scorecard. That's the extent of the game. It can be played by two, three or four players. And I'll just go to the rack next to complete the explanation of this game. Okay, we're just using the standard diamond rack setup for rivers. There's no particular color order we have to put our dragons in around the perimeter because we're all shooting for the same balls and all balls are in place. So any color order, but you've got your, again, you've got your dragons around the outside and the emperors in the central positions. And we are just playing through racks. So once we finish this rack, we just reset and, and play the next rack until someone has completed their river scorecard and is declared the winner. Okay, we're up to game number five of Eliminator. And like I say, this is my presentation and you'll use this in conjunction with the how to play video, which is on the web app itself. But the fifth game is called Eliminator and it's only a three or a four player game. You know those times when you're playing pool on the table and there's a third person and you're rotating turns all the time? In this case, you can all play. Um, and the game itself is pretty simple and it's called Eliminator and that's exactly what it is in that each player has one colour set and their objective is to eliminate the two other players' balls to leave their balls the only colour remaining on the table and if that's the case, that person is the winner. So in this rack setup, you can see you've got the dragons around the outside, emperors in the middle, I'm breaking, so I've got my red balls in the lead, lead position, my red emperor there. You're the yellow balls with your yellow emperor in the middle, and our friend is the black balls with their black emperor in the middle. My objective is to try and pocket our friend's black balls here and your yellow balls and leave my reds to be the last color on the table. You're the same, except your yellow balls, you're trying to get, a, get rid of my red balls and our friend's black balls to leave you with the only colour remaining on the table. Only one thing is, you have to pocket your opponent's dragons in before their emperor, all right? If you pocket their emperor in before all their dragons are gone, their emperor is respotted. you lose your turn, next player gets ball in hand. Now, I don't think Eliminator will ever be a competition game, because there are other elements than skill involved in this game. There is collusion. Put it this way, if I've got a bunch of my balls still on the table and you and our friend have only got a few, I'm pretty sure you're gonna collude and start knocking off my balls to bring me back 
uh, in the race. But I can also guarantee at some stage, you're probably gonna double cross each other when the situation arises. So, you know, I say it could never be a competition game, but there are a lot of popular games these days based around collusion and uh, skullduggery. So you never know. Um, so that is the three player version of Eliminator. The four player version just brings in the standard diamond rack. And we've got four colours back in the rack, the four emperors in the middle, and we've got four players that can play the game. So in this instance, I'm breaking and I'm the red set. I've got to try and get in the black balls, the pearl balls, and the yellow balls, leaving those emperors to last. You're yellow, so you're after all these other balls to hopefully be the last remaining colour left on the table. Our friends on the pearl balls wants to be the last person who their, book, their balls on the table being poor balls, and our friend's friend can now play in the game as well. And they're the black balls, and they're aiming for the red, the yellow, and the pearl balls. Keeping in mind, got to get the dragons in before you can pocket someone's emperor last. Um, that's it, really. It's just a win-loss game. Uh, a lot of fun on the table. Um, you know, can get a little bit... Uh, a little bit abusive, uh, players uh, threatening others, you know, not to hit their ball in or trying to collude and gang up and, as I said, double cross at the end. It's a really good, fun party game. Uh, that's the game of Eliminator. Now we've got to game six of Chinese Dragons and game six is called Attack or Deny. Now, this is a somewhat difficult game to explain because there are a couple of elements you have to consider on the table at the same time. So it's a quite strategic thinking game. Let's see how I go. The first thing is it's only a two player game, attack or deny. And we're using the standard diamond rack. We're using four colors. We've got three dragons and an emperor for each color. And a bit like sacrifice, before the game starts, we're deciding which two colour sets I'm going to be and which two colour sets you're going to be. So, clearly, I'm the darker colour balls and you're the more colourful colour balls. I think there's a good delineation with those colours. Now, the aim of the game is, first of all, it's a point scoring system. So, every time I pocket one of my own dragons, whether it be the black dragon or a pearl dragon, I get five points and I get another shot. If I pocket my emperor, either emperor, I get 10 points. So dragons are worth five points. Emperors are worth 10 points. Same for you. No particular order that I have to hit these balls in. I can hit the emperor in at any point in time. It's not like I have to hit the emperor in last, like in some of the other games. But I do get double points for the emperor. Now, I can hit my own balls in and score points, or I can actually hit your balls in and deny you points. So if I hit your red dragon in, I've actually denied you the opportunity to pocket yourself, and hence I've denied you five points. So this gets interesting because you're over the table, your first priority is to pocket your own balls, and you know that an emperor's worth twice as much as a dragon. So you want to be a little bit wary of them because your opponent can will have his eye on your emperors as well because he might want to deny you 10 points. So there's a bigger denial value as well as a, um, a, and a lesser denial value on the dragon. So you've got to keep your eye on your own emperors. The final thing is, if I've hit three of my black balls in, let's say I've hit an emperor and two dragons, and I'm left with one of this color left. If I pocket that, I get the value of that ball, five points for a dragon, plus an extra 10 points because it's the last color on the table. So if, the, if my last black ball was a dragon and I pocketed, I get five points for the dragon and 10 bonus points. If it was the emperor, I would have got 10 points for the emperor and 10 bonus points. So that means that if that ball's out there on their own, I, I really want to try and pocket that because it's got good value. But my opponent's also looking and going, I want to deny him pocketing that ball. 
Okay, so I hope you've got the element of attack, pocketing your own balls, deny taking value away from your opponent's balls. That's the number one concept. You have to overlay that with the aim at the end of the day is to complete all your balls, right? So that brings the game to an end when one person has finished all their balls. That person will also get whatever balls are left of the, on the table of their opponents. So I, you still had two dragons left on the table. In addition to the point score I've already got, I get points for every ball of yours that are left on the table once I've cleared my own, right? So you sort of go, how does that happen? Well, it's a point scoring game, right? And attack or deny should be played over a number of racks to a points target. And that in, in, in doing that, you will see that the degree to which you win each rack is the most important aspect of attack and a deny. You want to win by a lot to get those points at the end of the game to get to your total. It's gonna to be played over a couple of racks. So you, your decision on each shot is yes, I want to pocket my balls to get points. Yes, the emperors are more important than the dragons. But also, I'm keeping an eye on my opponent's balls because sometimes when they're on their own, they're worth a lot of value. So I want to deny you those points in the overall picture. But I've got to keep in mind that every time I take one of your balls off the table, I'm actually taking a few points off myself at the end of the game. So you'll be aiming or denying your opponents when there's a high value ball that you should deny them from. But also it's a bit of a get out clause if you haven't got a shot on your own ball. So if these were all in a very hard position to pocket, but say one of your balls was in an easy position to pocket, I might hit that in so I can reposition my white ball to then get a shot on my ball. So all balls are in play. It's just a decision that you have to make, which is to attack your own balls or to deny your opponent points on their balls. Now, I know that's actually quite a bit to take in at once. Um, all I can say is, look at this twice, listen to me, hopefully that makes sense. You've got the video there and the rules um, in the web app itself, and play a game. Because it's a really rewarding game where you've got to think through maths, positioning, scorecard, and various values that are going on the table at any, any particular point in time. So that's the two-player only game of Attack or Deny. Welcome to game seven of Chinese Dragons. Actually, there is no game seven of Chinese Dragons, but with your Chinese Dragons balls, you can actually play 15 ball pool. All I've done is I've separated two colors of dragons, darker colors, pearl and black, and two colorful colors, red and yellow, and I just, uh, set the rack up ball using the sea goddess as the black ball. So instead of big, bigs and littles, we've got darks and colours and you can set up the triangle rack to play the game of pool. Simply, um, now I know there's various ways to set up a pool rack, so don't shoot me for that, but I'm just going to do the simple way, which is starting from the front. Bigs, littles, bigs, littles. Bigs, littles, bigs, littles, bigs, littles, bigs, littles, black ball, bigs, littles, darks, colours. All you've got to do is basically, and you once you've started using the Chinese dragon balls, you'll actually tune into colour very well because it's all about colour and characters. So here's our rack up for the normal 15 ball pool. Um, with uh, me on, or whoever hits the grey and black ball in first, being on darks, and the other colour, the other player being on colours. So we don't call it game seven of Chinese Dragons. It's just another game being pulled that you can play with these very adaptable balls. Now, a ball that hasn't figured much in the games that I've shown you so far is the Sea Goddess. So the Sea Goddess, if you remember in the story of the Emperor and the Four Dragons, it was the Sea Goddess who told the emperor that the dragons had taken the water out of the sea to save the people. 
which caused all sorts of problems for the dragon. So the sea goddess is a bit of a wild card. Now we showed you that you can set up uh, a game of pool uh, using Chinese dragon's balls and the sea goddess was the black one, but she can also be used as a wild card in some of the Chinese dragons games themselves. So first of all, in sacrifice, if you remember, I had to pocket my balls before you pocketed your balls and we had to pocket the dragons before our emperors. You can introduce a sea ball into sacrifice and she acts very much like a black ball would in pool. I, if, if we, we have her as the ball, place her at the back of the rack, like so, when you're setting up and she acts as the black ball. So if you pocket the sea goddess, you actually lose the game. And once uh, uh, the players are racing to complete their two colors, they then must pocket the sea goddess last to actually win the game. So that's how she can be used in sacrifice. She can be used in rivers. It's really good in rivers. Again, I place her at the back of the rack once I've set up and in rivers, as you remember, if you pocket a ball, you have to, and it's a ball you need, you mark it off on your river scorecard. The Sea Goddess acts as a wild card. If you pocket the Sea Goddess, you can nominate what ball she is of all the balls on your scorecard. So if you're really after a Pearl Emperor and the Pearl Emperor is no longer on the table, you would nominate perhaps the Sea Goddess once you pocket her in. So she acts as a wild card in rivers. Uh, in Eliminator, again, with our Eliminator rack here, uh, I would place, again, the Sea Goddess at the back of the rack. And in Eliminator, if you pocket the Sea Goddess, you then get to nominate one of your opponent's balls that gets taken off the table. Um, so it, she just adds to the angst that can be in the room with the game of Eliminator. And then finally, uh, single, strap, single Strike. So let's quickly set up single strike rack just take the two colors alternate and alternate straighten up and there's your rack set up for single strike mini same for maxi use of the sea goddess i put the sea goddess at the back of the the dragons and the sea goddess if you pocket a dragon Oh, this was a yellow dragon, you've got to shoot for yellow emperor. But if the sea goddess is still on the table, you can actually opt to pocket the sea goddess as an all color emperor, if you know what I mean. So it doesn't matter what dragon color you pocket, you can actually pocket the sea goddess. When she's pocketed, she stays in the pocket. She's only used once in single strike, mini or maxi. Again, as that wild card ball that you can put on the table. So they're the various uses of the sea goddess. And that brings this little Chinese Dragon Sessions to a close. My closing words to you are, I've explained six games to you there now. Now, if I sat down with a pack of cards and explained six games one on one, uh, you know, one after the other, you'd be pretty confused by the end. So my big, uh, my, my big message to you is, if you do happen to you know, buy some Chinese Dragon's Balls, um, select a game, one game, learn the game, get familiar with the game, get good at the game, then progress to the next game. Once you've got them all in there, they, they're hardwired into your brain. So they're hardwired into me right now. So I can pick and choose any game that you know I wanna play for whatever type of game or mood that I'm in. At the moment, for example, I'm full on into Jostle. I think it's an actually fantastic game. Um, so I'm playing that a lot. Um, but you you know if i want to play a really hard longer game i'll go for single strike maxi if i want to just have a bit of fun and pot some balls on the table then i really like something like rivers if i'm not friendly with anybody at the moment i might pick eliminator but the big message to you is do one game at a time six is a lot to take on and you've got these balls um you know for the rest of your life so plenty of fun for you with chinese dragons into the future good luck